Welcome back to another Vibes and Frequencies video. <laughs> My name is Nathan, and while I normally find myself talking about the metaphysical properties of crystals, energy, etc., etc., in this video, we're diving deep into the mysterious origin of Libyan desert glass. Even science, with all of its technological advancements in today's day and age, cannot peg where Libyan desert glass has come from. Technically, this should be impossible, what I'm holding in my hand right now. So this being said, put your seatbelts on. We're diving all the way into the mysterious origin of Libyan desert glass, as well as why science can't figure out where this baby came from. Let's get into it. First things first, let's ask a question for ourselves. What is Libyan desert glass? Libyan desert glass is considered, considered to be an impact type. Now, I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into that, but for now, it's considered to be an impactite, and it's found in the Western desert part of Egypt, and it's along the Libyan border, <laughs> okay? Hence, oh, Libyan desert glass. The name makes sense. Where we find Libyan desert glass on Earth, as in we know where to go to find it, right? The issue is the origin. And even science is admitting that there really is no certainty here. So this is the mystery I want to get into because as I said, it's completely fantastic. It's completely mind blowing. So let's ask another question here. Why is its origin unknown? Why can't we pinpoint it, okay? <laughs> here is what we do know. We know that this is coming from an outer space origin. And when I say outer space origin, I'm talking meteorite, tektite, impactite. The reason for this is because of the energy that would have been required to create this. I am referencing here an article which I read on Cosmos, which is a scientific magazine. I've got it linked in the description below for you guys to check out further on your own. I do recommend you do so. The thing is, is that this scientific recording instruments can show us that this is a nearly pure form of what's called silica glass. This means that it requires 1600 degrees temperature Celsius at least to be formed. This is completely outside of the realm of possibility within our normal igneous rock type formations. So we're talking, it's a geological impossibility as in it cannot be formed within the earth, could be formed on the surface like our other crystals that we go and mine and find. It's just not possible. So that's how we know it's from outer space, right? Let's continue with this. Let's move on to the possibility of this being a meteor impact. Okay, so it's a meteor impact. Cool. Where's the crater? There is no crater at all. Meteor hits the ground, it creates a crater. You guys know this. We see this as evidence all over the world. It, it just makes sense. I don't need to go deep into that. Now, if you're like me, you'll be thinking possibly, well, wasn't this formed 29 million years ago? Which by the way, that's what our scientific instruments show us. Wasn't this formed way, 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 way back in the day? And isn't it in the Libyan desert, right? We're talking a basic sand sea. Is it not possible that the sand, the desert has moved and covered the crater? Okay, so I asked myself this too, but within a documentary that I've also got listed in the description, guys, they go into this and why that's also not the case. Basically, there is no evidence at all of there being a crater. We can't find it and no, sand could not have covered it up. Yes, it could have, but it's disproved because there are other rocks that are formed in the exact area that the Libyan desert glass is. Not from the same creation, but they're there and they show no evidence at all of a crater impact. When this energy takes place, it would have affected their basic composition, right? Again, check out the documentary. They go really, really deep into this. It's really fascinating. They've got all kinds of really wild instrumentation things that they lay out and they show you what they're talking about. Really cool stuff. So the basic historical geography of the land and the scientific instruments that we're using to take a look at it, again, meteor ruled out. So let's go ahead and take a look at, again, what I discussed in the beginning as being what is mainly seen as it being an impact type. Let's talk about it because it's about to get real wild for us guys. <laughs> so yes, this is the theory of it being an impact type with the greatest amount of weight, but there still is a serious lack in this theory, okay? And I believe that science is putting its main conclusion on it being an impact type because there's just nothing else within the realm of possibility for us to look at it being. Where did it come from if it's not an impact type, right? How did it get there? Let's talk about why this 
can't be an impact type. With scientific instrumentation, we are able to see that in the formation and the different layers that we're able to take a look at, that this does have evidence of being an airburst. What do I mean by it being an airburst? Well, an airburst is essentially, think a meteor comes down to earth, but doesn't hit the ground. It explodes in the air, creating a huge massive heat wave that just kind of spreads out, right? This does show evidence of this taking place, but as you can see in the picture that I will have put up right now, this is an example of an airburst that actually took place in Russia in 2013. That's gnarly, right? You guys see this. <laughs> Let me kind of move out of the way. I'll give it more space. You guys see this, this picture, right? It's completely gnarly. And, and here's the thing though, this in this picture, they can measure the energy required for this kind of power to take place. This, what happened in Russia in 2013 is 0.5 megatons of energy, 0.5 megatons. That's a lot. Okay, Libyan desert glass, again, with the scientific instrumentation, we're able to see that this required at least, look at the crazy look in my eyes, <laughs> at least 100 megatons of energy, guys. 100 megatons of energy to create what I'm holding in my hand here, 0.5 to do this kind of damage. Not only this, but with this 0.5 megatons of energy that took place in Russia, there was no kind of glass formation. That wasn't even hot enough to melt the glass and you to melt sand into glass. And you can see the kind of destruction that took place just there. So when we look at this deeper, 100 megatons of energy to create this, we are talking a seriously catastrophic amount of energy that we are scientifically able to prove was required for this to be formed. Catastrophic. We're talking like ending of the dinosaurs if we're talking about that, right? <laughs> We're talking destruction of our atmosphere. We're talking close to planetary ending type energy taking place here. And there's just no geographical evidence of this. Okay, again, this is referenced a lot in the articles I got listed below as well as the documentary, but even science is sitting here scratching its head because this kind of energy, there's no geographical evidence. There's no historical evidence of this taking place. It, it just, we, we can't see that as evidence anywhere. So how did something that required so much dang energy end up here with no evidence of it being made? Here's the last piece of science I'm gonna throw in here before I get really wild. <laughs> the last piece is that they just discovered what is known as rhydite, okay? I believe that I'm saying this correctly. So rhydite is a mineral that is found, historically it has only been found by us in meteorites. It has never shown up in an impact type, never shown up in, you know what I'm saying? There, there's no airburst possibility. There is evidence that this had to have been from a meteor. And again, where's the crater? There's no geographical evidence. So even if this is the case, let's go ahead and tease it and say that this is the case, right? How did it get here? There's not even a, a meteor impact site with this kind of capable energy anywhere. So we've got something here that has evidence of 100 megatons of energy that just basically would have created a huge massive hole in our ground and there's no hole in the ground. So what the heck, what, what are we looking at here? <laughs> if you have an opinion about this, please put it in the description. I'm super fascinated about the history and mystery of this if you guys can't tell. So I'd love to talk to you about it, but let's go a little deeper, okay? Not only is there no geographical evidence to prove that this took place, not only is there, there's just no evidence. <laughs> We have all these different lines of areas that are showing us what this could be, and then it's completely, there's no evidence to support it. It's completely out of this world. I mean, yes, literally, but like also you guys get what I'm saying. And not only this, but there is geological scientific ways that we can look at and categorize how often these kind of events would take place even in the first place. Now, when I say this kind of event, I'm not talking the kind of catastrophic event that this is, but just in general, a general meteorite coming to the earth, a general airburst, right? And again, this just does not match up with our historical timeline and the scientific evidence of other events that have taken place. And it's completely precise and on point. The science is incredible that has shown when these things will happen, how they're happening. It's, it's a beautiful timeline that they're able to lay out, guys. And yet again, completely makes no sense. This does not fall into it. It just doesn't make any sense. So here's the deal. This glass in my hand right here seems to be impossible and yet I'm holding it. And I believe that science, again, 
not dissing science or anything. I love science, super cool. But I believe that science is not willing to look at what is technically considered impossible. They're only looking at the possibilities that we are aware of up to this point. But you know what? We used to think a whole bunch of things that ended up not being true and new information always comes in. So I'm really excited about the fact that we've got a serious mystery on our hands here, guys. And if we're gonna look at impossibility, impossibility cannot exist. The word literally doesn't make sense within the universe. Now, this is a little bit more philosophical and it's okay if this doesn't stick with you, but I'm gonna throw it in anyways. The only way that there could be impossibility is because of the possibility of something being impossible. There is no impossible without it being possible. Impossible has to be possible to be in existence in the first place. Again, it doesn't have to stick, don't worry, that really has nothing to do with the video. But what I wanna do here now, guys, is because we're looking outside of the realm of what science and society would say is you know, possible and, um, and the, the areas they're willing to look in, I want to, with you guys, just go ahead and get rid of this. <laughs> Cause yeah, and get, get, whoa. Okay, we're gonna take a look within the metaphysical community because there's a lot of really powerful information. Some of it resonates with me. And again, I wanna get the discussion going with you guys because this is a metaphysical energy channel about working with tools of transformation, which are crystals. So let's take it in that direction now that we can look at the fact that science doesn't even know what's going on here because it just makes this way more mystifying, way more exciting. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm not trying to push these things on you. This is more so just for fun to talk about and uh, I think you'll probably like them too. So first things first, there are very ancient literature Hindu texts, okay? Texts. <laughs> and they reference an ancient battle taking place. Now, there are similar things referenced in other pieces of literature, but I'm specifically talking about this piece. And the crazy thing is, is that it, it's described as there being super intense, powerful weapons of mass destruction involved. <laughs> so that already kind of resonates with it. And um, this is tagged to Libyan Desert Glass as well, the, the place that was writing about this. But what's cool is that I also read, and this is scientific speaking here in this part I'm putting it in, is that Libyan desert glass, there are formations of glass similar to this that appear in the dirt at nuclear test sites from back in the day when they would test nuclear explosions. But the difference is, is when you walk out on it, um, then it's, it's like this glass is like a hard layer on top. So obviously the pieces don't look anything like this but we do have evidence of nuclear weapons creating very similar structure, very similar in all the ways that this is, right? So I found this to be pretty interesting. Again, the science did find that there is rhydite in here, which suggests scientifically that this is from a meteorite, but there's also many ancient texts that reference this ancient nuclear war that took place. And in certain local regions around this area as well, I mean, we can't quite, again, scientifically place these things happening, but I think they're super interesting. And to consider the fact that these nuclear weapons were around before when we think they were created, it's, it's pretty far out there, I know. But I also have seen some very interesting alien type, uh, alien type TV shows where they're like disclosing information and stuff on Gaia TV. It was really interesting um, because they're talking about how this ancient battle that is referred to in texts actually took place with aliens and that there were big ships in the sky and that the aliens had these like beam type nuclear weapons, which would interestingly align more with the shape that these are formed rather than being this hard layer on top of the surface. So very interesting stuff. They talk about um, other things in like ancient religious texts as well as them being aliens that were actually there rather than just these like gods that people would follow, they were actually referred to as being aliens in some of the disclosure type videos that I've seen. This being said, again, I know this stuff is pretty weird, but I really am curious to hear what you guys think about these things. Another interesting one that I read is that, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Firmament, but I had never heard about it before until looking deeper into this. And it was another wild thing I know, but they talk about, this is in the, the Bible actually, the Firmament is like this layer that supposedly was created to like separate the oceans that the land could be formed. Do not quote me on this. 
<laughs> this this stuff is new to me and it's it's just fun. And I guess it's like this huge like layer, um, like a dome around the earth. And people talk about how in the metaphysical community that pieces of glass are intentionally dropped down from it in like certain regions regions for like energetic purposes for like energetic transformational type vibration shifts to take place very interesting stuff and i did promise you guys in the beginning of this video or at least i did say that i would mention what i think what i believe is that <laughs> libyan desert glass is from a different dimension where there was this ancient battle taking place why do i believe that just because i do there's no evidence to tell you guys this at all or, or to get you on my on my table with this, but um, this is what I believe. This is what resonates with me and it's the own information that came up within me that I see validated in other sources. For me, there is a different dimension always. We're existing in so many different layers of dimensions of reality. And I believe that this was formed in a specific dimension of things and then our dimension right now takes place in the same kind of dimension where we can physically reach out and touch this, but it's not necessarily the same dimension where we can see the evidence of it being created. I know that that sounds weird. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that. I do resonate with the idea of an ancient battle taking place. I do resonate with the idea of extraterrestrials being you know, on the planet beforehand and just kind of existing in this higher vibrational different layer that we're not necessarily able to perceive, but is taking place. So, <laughs> that being said, thank you guys for watching this Vibes and Frequencies video. This is very different from anything that I've ever done. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like so I know, and I could investigate maybe doing more videos on, you know, such as Moldavite, some other crystals. There is some, some really cool stuff going on in the realm of where these things are coming from, guys, and the different dimensions of energies. So, long story short, thank you for watching. <laughs> I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you in a day from today, and you have a good one. And don't forget to let me know about what you think and what resonates with you about the origin of Libyan desert glass. Bye.